All right, the packages that we need are installed, so now it's time to start actually working on our app. The first thing we need to do, develop our landing page. This is what is going to show all of the job listings and allow a user to search through them and select individual ones. One thing to notice is that Breeze has given us some new views and a lot of components. We have these layouts as well for app, guest, and navigation, and a view for the dashboard that we saw in the last video after logging in. Let's open up our routes web file, and for the main landing route, instead of returning the welcome view, we're going to call a method in the listing controller class called index, and name this route listings.index. I'm going to include the app HTTP controllers namespace at the top. That way we can specify a shorter path to the controller classes for the routes without having to individually include each one. Now we don't actually have that controller yet, but using our terminal, we can run artisan make controller listing controller to generate it. Let's open that up and create a new method called index. This is going to get all of our listings, which is a listing model where is active is set to true with the associated tag models, latest, which is just an eloquent shortcut for sort by created at descending, and get to retrieve the model collection. Then we'll return a view called listings index with the listings that we just pulled in. Let's return the listings early and refresh the main page. We can see that we are getting back all of our listings with their associated test data that we seeded earlier. And it's including the array of tags attached to each listing just as we wanted. Let's actually return that view now and create it in our resources views folder. Listings index.blade.php. This page is going to extend the app layout, and we'll need to make some quick modifications to that file first. Opening it up, let's get rid of everything in between the body tags, and replace it with this wrapper div to give us some base Tailwind CSS stylings. Include a header component, the slot, and a footer component. Now if you're unfamiliar with blade components, I'll give you a quick rundown of what they are and how we're going to use them in this application. Where before in Laravel you might have called at include partials.header or something like that to pull in a header block, you can now create a blade file in the components directory of your views. Then using the x header element name, which is generated by prefixing the component file name with X, it automatically pulls it into another blade file. The beauty of this is that you can pull in classes, other attributes, or provide defaults that can be overridden. And I'm just going to paste in some markup that I already have handy for a basic header. It contains a logo with an SVG image, a title, a link to the login route for employers who have posted listings, and a button to post a new listing. This and some of the other markup you'll see throughout these videos is based off some examples on tailblocks.cc. If you'd like to check it out, I've linked the site in the description of this video. All right, that looks good. Now on to the footer blade component. Again, pasting in some pre-made markup. This component is laid out very similar to the header. We have an SVG image for the logo, our site title, and a small menu of social network links. Now let's open up the actual listings.index blade file and get to work. We can test out our two components that we just made by adding in some markup here. Heading back to our browser and refreshing, and we just see hello job listings. No header or footer. Well, that's because we are not extending our app layout file. 
If you've never done this with blade components, it's pretty straightforward. Before, where you would do something like at extends layout.app and then at section for the content or something, now we use x app layout corresponding to our layout app.blade file. And then anything that's added between these brackets gets output where the slot variable is in the app.blade.php file. Head back to our browser, refresh, and perfect. We can see our header and footer components and our example text nestled right between them as expected. Let's remove that test text and actually add in something that we'd want. First, a hero component. This will act as a kind of introduction to the site. So with this markup, we have a section centered and padded around, and then a large title with a smaller subtitle in a lighter color. Let's refresh our browser and see how that looks. Nice. So what's next? Well, how about we display all of the tags associated with our listings? In a container, we can run a for each loop on the tags array. And for each of the tags, let's create a link back to the listings.index page, but including a tag query that passes in the tag slug name. Style it up with some Tailwind classes to make it look like a tag. and we'll echo out the name of the tag. Heading back into our listing controller, let's pull in those tags. Tag order by name, and get. Then include that in our compact list. Back in our browser, let's refresh one more time, and there we go a list of tags available in our application right now. If we click on one, we can see that we are redirected back to this home page with a tag query in the URL bar containing the slug for the tag that we clicked on. We should probably highlight the current tag that's active as well. In the class names of our tag links, let's echo out some additional classes based on a conditional. If the tag slug in this loop is equal to request get tag, Then include BG Indigo 500 and text white. Otherwise, BG white and text Indigo 500. All right, refreshing and working just as expected. Before we can properly filter out the listings from these click tags, we'll have to actually display the listings. So let's tackle that now. First, let's get a large title on the page that says All Jobs. And then in parentheses, we'll include the number of current listings available. We can do this by echoing out the value of the count method directly on the returned eloquent collection of listings. Next, we'll run a for each loop on each of the listings. We'll set each item as a link that can be clicked on and include some Tailwind classes for padding, border, and flex. And just like the tags, we'll conditionally add in a different background if the listing is highlighted. Inside each listing element, let's make this wrapper.
and include the image for the logo. We'll fix it to the same specific height and width through Tailwind, and round the whole thing. Object Cover is also used to prevent the image from looking stretched if it's not a perfect square source image. Next, we'll include a heading holding the title of the listing. And under that, the company name, as well as a dash, followed up with the location. We'll also list out each of the tags associated with this individual listing, formatted in the exact same way and style as the tag list at the top of the website. And then at the end of the listing, we'll display how long it's been since it was posted. This is easily accomplished with diff for humans, a carbon method that's accessible by default through the created at and updated at timestamp attributes. Let's head over to our browser, refresh, and almost. Everything's looking pretty good, except for the images. They are all showing broken files. The reason for that is that we have a disconnect between where our images are stored and the public folder available to our site's visitors. We have the images here, under the storage folder, but we need to create a symlink in the site's root folder that also makes them accessible to the public. Thankfully, Laravel has this functionality built in with a simple, single artisan command. Opening up the terminal, running artisan storage link, generates that symlink between storage app public and public storage. Now if we refresh the browser, we can see our images appearing just as expected. Scrolling down, we are seeing that some listings are highlighted in yellow, and we can also see they are organized by date from newest to oldest. Something that's missing from this hero section, though, is a search bar. We should include it so users can search for keywords available in a listing or narrow down by company or location. In the Hero Blade component, let's add the markup for a form. The action is the same route we were just on, listings.index, and the method is get. Let's add some styles and a wrapper div to center this. Include a text input called S. This way, the form submission will just be the landing URL with an S query attached to it. We'll set the value as request get S, autofilling the input if we've searched for something already. And finally, a button to finish it up.
as well as a little helper text under the form. This will let our users know what kind of keywords they should be searching for. Refreshing the page, and it's looking great. We just have to add the search functionality to it. In the listing controller, we'll set a conditional checking if the request object has any value from the search form. And if it does, let's create a query variable holding the lowercase string the user searched for. Then we'll get a modified listings collection based on listings filter. This is a method available in Laravel collections that loops through each item in the collection with a closure function and either keeps or discards that item based on the Boolean return of that closure. So returning false in here removes a listing and true keeps it. Based on that information, we can check a few different attributes of the listing against the search string to determine if we should keep it. First, if the title, set to lowercase, contains our string, we'll return true. If the company that the listing is under contains our string, we'll also return true. And if the location contains our string, we'll return true. And if the listing's content contains our string, we'll return true. If none of these happens though, return false, discarding the listing. Oops, I almost forgot to add in the request object to our controller's index method. All right, let's refresh and take a look. Well, already we can see that we've removed some listings and we're down to 32, which means that in these 32, the string alias is in the title, company, location, or content somewhere. Actually, I changed my mind. Let's not look through the listings content. Okay, and now we only have two. You can clearly see that alias is in both of their titles. Taking a step back real quick, we'll have to add functionality to the tag links that we discussed earlier. In the listing controller, let's add another conditional checking if the request object has a tag property. If so, let's get the tag with request get, and that should be the slug of the tags that we want to display. Just like with the search query, we can use a listings filter to retrieve a modified set of listings. However, this closure function is a lot simpler. We can call return listings, tags, contains, and then pass in the column that we're going to compare, in our case, slug, then the value that we're going to compare it against the tag variable. This returns either a true or false, depending on if the listings related tag collection contains the past in slug in the appropriate database column. Listing, not listings. And this is actually nested in the wrong place under the search conditional still. Let me just fix that. Okay, heading back into the browser and refreshing. We are now seeing 12 listings returned, each of them have the error tag associated with them. Clicking on a different tag, and we're presented with a different set of listings that are associated with that tag instead. All right, so that's the landing page of our job board, fully developed and looking good with Tailwind. Next, we'll be diving in and creating the view for an individual listing.